good morning students today i'm going to start civics chapter 7 urban administration as you all know that our chapter name is urban administration do you know student what is urban administration listen if you live in a city or town have you ever wondered where the water and electricity in your house come from your father may buy the bulbs for home but who fix the bulb on the streets students there is a complex network of workers and departments that carry out duties related to urban administration in india it take place under municipal corporation or councils so let's go deeper in this topic as far as urban administration in india is concerned the majority of the burden falls on the municipal corporation when you live in one of the metro cities these corporation have a huge strength and even bigger budget allocation students <clears throat> a good part of the indian population lives in town and cities these are called urban areas and the people residing in these areas are urban people like rural population the urban people also need all those civic amenities such as water supply electricity roads transport educational institutions medical facilities etc to live comfortably and to work in some respect urban people's problem are more complex than those of the villagers to sort out these problems and to govern themselves the urban people also elect their representatives and form urban local self government in the shape of municipal corporation or municipal committee nagar nigam nagar palika or nagar panchayat the greater a local governing body is the more or its functions and powers the municipalities of large cities are known as municipal corporation the municipal corporation is a local government in india that administrates urban areas with a population of more than 1 million the growing population and urbanization in various cities of india were in need of a local governing body that can work for providing necessary community services like health care educational institutions housing transport etc by collecting property tax and fixed grant from the state government the 74th amendment act laid down the type of formation of urban local government and their activities municipal corporation are referred to by different names in different states due to regional language variations all of which are translated to municipal corporation in english these name include nagar nigam in delhi uttar pradesh uttarakhand bihar jharkhand rajasthan and haryana the area administered by a municipal corporation is known as a municipal area municipal corporation are in big cities after then municipal council is there municipal council works in small cities it is also known as municipal council or municipality its, its member are also elected from the different wards and the city is divided into many wards after this next is nagar panchayat nagar panchayat is the local self government in small towns and the members of the nagar panchayat are also elected and the number of member varies from one town to another it is depending on its uh, size and population municipal corporation composition cities which have a population of more than 10 lakh have municipal corporation as a local self governing body the members are elected through voting by the registered adult voters of the city 
To conduct municipal election, the city is divided into a small constituencies or areas called ward. Each ward has one elected representative called the councillor. The member of councillors depend upon the population of that city. The corporation is elected for a period of five years. Seats are reserved for scheduled caste, scheduled tribe, and women. The mayor, who is known as Mahapur also, is the head of the corporation. He or she is known as the first citizen and is elected by the member of the municipal corporation. He or she presides over the meeting of the corporation. A deputy mayor is also elected to take care of duties in absence of the mayor. A chief executive officer or municipal commissioner is appointed by the state government. He or she holds the office for five years. He or she acts as a link between the state government and the municipal corporation. A municipal corporation can be dissolved earlier by the state government for non-functioning or poor functioning and is may remain dissolved for a maximum period of six months, within which a new committee has to be formed after conducting a fresh election. What are the functions of mayor? All members of a corporation elect a mayor and a deputy mayor. The mayor presides over the meetings and looks after the work of the corporation with the help of executive officers like the municipal commissioner, the chief engineer and the chief medical officer. It needs to be noticed that in majority of states, the mayor is elected indirectly. Whereas in some states, Tamil Nadu, Himachal Pradesh, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Kerala, Karnataka, etc., the mayor is elected directly by people. Similarly, the tenure of a mayor differs from state to state, from one year to two and a half years to five years. In Delhi, the mayor is indirectly elected for one year. What committee give community members to uh, uh, what committee give community members the opportunity to express their needs, uh, their opinions on issues that affect their lives, and to have them heard at municipal level? Municipal corporation. They are meant for big cities having a population as big as that of a district. As they serve a larger population, they have more powers. They have large resources as they serve more people. The municipal corporation deals directly with the state government. And the municipal corporation, they are less in number. They are in about 50 big cities of India. The municipal bodies need funds to perform their functions. They collect taxes from various sources. Number one is the vehicle tax on motorized vehicles, toll tax for the use of roads and bridges, water tax on the amount of water used, property business and occupation tax, then rent collected from buildings owned by the urban local body, then birth and death certificate fees. Apart from the taxes collected, urban local bodies also receive yearly grant from the state government. They can also borrow funds for specific purposes if the state government approves of them. A state finance commission is appointed every five years to analyze the financial position of the urban local bodies. Besides looking into the financial position of the states, it also gives suggestions to the state government about the measures needed to reinforce the financial position of the local self-government. Now the subcontractors. 
Sometimes the municipal corporation seeks partnerships with private organizations in areas that are too large for them to handle. For example, during peak summers, distribution of electricity is handled by some private companies. For some specific tasks such as building of roads, municipal corporation hire private agencies as subcontractors. They do the work on behalf of the municipal corporation. However, the subcontractors often ill-treat their employees who are appointed on a contractual basis. They are underpaid and denied the facilities. For the smooth functioning of urban administration, it is important that citizens cooperate with the administrative bodies. If they are not satisfied with something or if they have any grievance, citizens should deal with it in a peaceful manner. Panchayat is set up for an area that is changing from a ruler to an urban type. This is called a transactional area. Such an area does not qualify for the setting up of a municipality but it considers significant enough to have a local self-governing body. Every state decides for itself the minimum population required for setting up a Nagar Panchayat. Nagar Panchayat consists of a minimum of 10 elected ward members and 3 nominated members. Nagar Panchayat has a term of 5 years but it can be dissolved earlier if it is unable to function effectively or if it is abuses its authority. A Nagar Panchayat looks after water supply, drainage, cleaning of streets, sanitation, primary education, health, bathing hearts and slum improvement. Now next topic is municipality. Municipality, municipal committee and municipal council. Now what is this? Listen, a municipality is also called a municipal committee or a municipal council. It is a local self-governing body in smaller towns and cities. Municipalities are also divided into wards which may be grouped together into ward councils. One or more representatives are elected to represent each ward. Now the composition. The members of the municipality are elected for a term of five years. It can be dissolved earlier if it is not done function according to the rules laid down or is not able to function effectively. In such a case, new members have to be elected within six months so that the term can be completed. The candidates who wish to contest the election must be 21 years of age and above. All the citizens of India who are 18 years of age and above can vote in municipal elections. The population of a town or city determines the number of members in the municipality. The number of elected members is usually 15 to 60. The city is divided into a number of wards. One member is elected from each ward. Some seats are reserved in every municipality for members belonging to the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. One third of the total seats are reserved for women. Municipalities have meetings at regular intervals. The members elect a chairperson who presides over the meetings. The head of the municipal committee is the commissioner or president. A vice chairperson is elected to take charge in his or her absence. A chief municipal officer along with officers like engineer, sanitary inspector, health officer and education officer who come from the state public service. 
are appointed by the state government to control the administrative affairs of the municipality. The municipality works for a larger area than the Nagar Panchayat. The municipality is responsible for water supply, solid waste management, hospitals, education, street lighting, road drainage, records of birth and death. Now next is solid waste management. Solid waste management is one of the basic essential services provided by municipal authorities in the country to keep urban centers clean. Waste is found everywhere leading to insanitary living conditions. Daily life in industrialized nations can generate several tons of solid waste. Solid waste management is a system for handling all this garbage. Municipal waste collection is a part of solid waste management as are recycling programs, dumps and burners. In India, all the municipal corporations have adopted the practice of landfilling of low-lying areas to dispose of solid waste. The waste is dumped on vacant land or on the outskirts of the city in an unscientific manner. This kind of garbage disposal leads to air, water pollution, foul smell and serious health problems. Some cleanest tips are there. Always use dustbin that have lids. Ensure that garbage is taken away regularly. Third, throw garbage only in iron bin, trolleys or dustbins provided by the municipal body. Four, do not throw garbage carelessly. Solid waste can be safely collected, transported and disposed of without creating health hazard for the public in general provided the general public cooperates with the civic authorities. Now, what are the benefits of waste management? Insects, mosquitoes and germs that pose a public health risk are eliminated. Recycling reduces the amount of solid for disposal. Fuel smell from garbage is removed. Production of best quality manure can be facilitated. Formation of green belt along the streets can be implemented. E-waste. What is e-waste students? Listen, today we are, uh, today we use different types of electronic products such as computers, mobile phones, television, washing machine etc what happens to them after they stop functioning such electronic waste is called e-waste proper disposal of e-waste is a major concern because many of these electronic items might contain harmful chemicals large e-waste centers are located in delhi Meerut, Firozabad and Chennai. Workers working here face many health hazards. Poor methods of disposal of e-waste leads to the release of harmful toxin into the environment. The government has formulated certain guidelines so that e-waste does not contribute to pollution and can be reused and recycled. study surat extreme unhygienic conditions led to the outbreak of the deadly disease of plague in the city of surat in 1994 many people lost their lives while many others left the city after the outbreak of plague the city was divided into six zones each under a special commissioner to look after the cleaners. 
The roads were swept twice a day and the garbage dumps were cleared regularly. All the officers responsible for maintaining cleanliness had to go for field visits and ensure that the cleanliness procedures were being followed regularly. A fine was imposed on people littering the streets. With the joint efforts of the citizens and the municipal corporation of the city, now Surat is one of the cleanest cities in the country. Okay, students, thank you.